why does my fly press have one, two, three threaded holes and one and one handle rod. Hey guys, welcome back to Power Forge. I hope everyone had a great Christmas yesterday. My Christmas was great, low key. I don't have kids, so no wrapping paper in the trash today. Um, but you know what? I think 2025 for me is gonna be the year of the fly press. This is this might be my favorite blacksmithing tool, definitely top three um, to use when blacksmithing. What I like about it is the precision and the repeatability of this ram. You know, I throw this flywheel, it comes down with a, an immense amount of, of force directed perfectly down, you know, from top tool or top die down to bottom die. And I really love it. Uh, so in 2025, I plan to just improve the, the overall setup here. I already love the base that I've done. I already love some of the tool storage. Um, you may not have noticed this, but I took some old reclaimed lumber that I found in a barn, uh, some dimensional uh, two by six oak, and I, and I lined the bottom here for more storage. But now um, I wanna tackle an easy pro uh, project. I wanna add more handles. I, I think I'm tired of, you know, when I change my, my tooling out, and want to use a different handle rod position, I'm tired of unscrewing this and screwing it into a new position. And I don't think it will be um, too hard to fab up a couple of handles. In fact, I've already fabbed up one handle rod. Check this out. So I got this from McMaster Carr. I've got a length, an oversized length of cold rolled steel. It's beautiful, the finish it is. In fact, I just left it, it's, it's cold worked. So the finish is very nice. A lot nicer than this painted handle. Um, this is one inch diameter stock. Um, and I went ahead and threaded, threaded it eight TPI. So is there an advantage to only having one handle rod? You know, are you gonna hit yourself in the head or, or something if you have all three or if you have two? This is the number five Karachi fly press. And I believe um, number two through five have one handle rod supplied when you buy it. The number six has two, and then I believe, don't quote me on this, I could look it up on the, on the interwebs, but I believe um, seven and above, or larger units have all three. So I'm gonna put all three on mine. It'll actually increase, increase a little bit of the, the weight of the flywheel. Maybe it'll give me a little bit more oomph, another pound of pressure into the work, right? Not that I need it. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the uh, the requirements for a new handle rod. We're gonna fire up the Logan lathe and uh, cut us some threads and then we'll, we'll put all of them on, on the fly press and see how it looks. The overall length of the handle rod is 17 inches. Again, it's one inch diameter, cold works steel. And then the including this thread relief, the total length of thread is minimum, minimum inch and five eighths. It can be probably a sixteenth longer than that, but I don't think it's critical. As long as it comes out to about an inch and five eighths, I'll have enough thread relief. So my basic order of operations, when I get it in the lathe, I'm going to, you know, measure over to where I want to have my thread relief. I'll go down at least 125 thou or an eighth of an inch. My thread, my thread, or my tool is about 125 uh, thousandths of an inch wide, and we'll go down at least 125 thou. Okay. And then we're going to run. Um, we'll get the the OD that I want, and I believe it is right right around 990 thou. You know. I think max is plus 80 and min is minus um, 70 thou. So I've got a generous um, min max or max diameter that I can shoot for before I start threading. I'll throw a really nice chamfer on here and then using a single point threading tool, um, I will uh, machine in this eight TPI thread. So there in the middle of your screen, I've got, this is the 31st edition of the machinery's hand, machinery handbook or machinist handbook, whatever it's called. 
uh, one, one inch eight UNC thread. There's, there are my, my, uh, my classes, one alpha, two alpha, and three. I'm gonna shoot for the two A. And so I've got my max diameter at 0.998 to 0.9830. So I think, you know, anywhere around 990 thou will be perfect. So I should, I'll probably be able to just do it in one pass, mic it, and then move on to, uh, to threading. I haven't done a lot of threading on this particular lathe before, but, um, before I've, uh, before I'm going to turn this down to its, um, final OD prior to, prior to single point threading, I wanted to make sure I had my threads per inch correctly. So I did a little scratch pass. I threw on some marker here, did a little scratch pass and I, and confirmed that I have, you know, eight of these lines within one inch. And then while I was in there, I marked where I want to, um, start my thread of relief or end my thread of relief right here. So I, honestly don't know how to film this. So I'm going to throw the camera to the side, um, sh show some highlights of getting it done. And then we'll just meet back at the fly press because, um, well, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, see you at the, see you back at the fly press. <laughs> had it set on ATPI. That's not going to do it. Much better. Okay, now we can start threading.
guys. I've got these threads machined in here. Let's take it over to the fly press. Do a quick test fit. You know, I measured it against the uh, the other handle, and I'm pretty sure it'll fit. So let's let's take it over there, and then we're gonna we'll mark the length, cut it off, dress it in the lathe, and we'll be done. Let's see, put it in this one. Yeah, it looks good. Feels tight. You know, this one's quite loose, even tightened all the way in. It's loose, and I'll pull that out and show you the threads. We'll compare the two, but I want a tighter fit. I don't want to take this out. Yeah. Oh, oh, might need to get some WD-40 on this. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, that, there's a lot of debris. Let me clean these threads out. There's quite a bit of debris in here. But of course there is. But of course there is. Let's try this one. Like I said, once these go in, once these go in, they're not coming out. So I've got one made, this is the third. Oh no, much better, okay. Okay, all, all the way in, flush on top. And then this one, let's take a gander and compare these threads. Maybe they overturn them on possible, or on, overturn them on purpose. But hopefully this will focus. Um, can you see these threads? They're to a knife's edge. Right, the crest and valley is very, you know, it's very worked in there compared to, to this one where it still has a robust thread. Okay. But I like, see, this is how it should feel. There we go. A little tight at the end, a little tight at the end. It's tighter. And this one is the original and it's a little looser. So all three, ooh. <laughs> oh yeah. That's going to be the shit right there. That's going to be awesome. All right. Let's cut that down to size. All right, all done. Got all three installed, machine and installed. And, uh, you know, I guess it's just cost, right? They don't want to spend the extra money on material, but the material is not too bad. It's not too bad. I bought these off of McMaster car. I'll leave a link in the description so you can price it out. Um, also, if you can't, if you have this fly press with the eight TPI and you can't machine this, go to my website. You can buy one there and uh, I'll ship it out to you. Please tune in on, on future fly press videos. I've got a new uh, base plate subplate planned, <laughs> a big old 12 by 18 uh, subplate, quite an ambitious project which I quite possibly might fail miserably and waste a lot of money, but hopefully I can make it uh, work and all of my future tooling will be based off this next uh, base plate. So thanks for tuning in. Catch you later. Bye.